Hi everybody, Fran here at New Testament Explained. This is a third video of three on the purpose of John's Gospel and this video is going to focus in on whether John or the author of John's Gospel was trying to convey Jesus as the fulfilment of scripture. In terms of a starting point then, the fourth gospel, John's Gospel, cites, which means uses scripture from the Old Testament. And the author does this to show that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. In the first part of John's Gospel, the Old Testament scriptures are introduced with the phrase, it was written. And interestingly, in the second part of the Gospel, the phrase changes to this was to fulfill the scriptures. Uh, and we see the second phrasing used, especially in the passion narrative. So what we're going to look at is how are Old Testament scriptures used uh, and what conclusions can we draw about uh, the author's use of Old Testament scripture? So the first thing that we need to do is determine where in John's Gospel there are references to the Old Testament. Now, this slide has four examples where John references the Old Testament. The first row is Jesus clears the temple court, which is a Bible passage in topic 5.2, where there is a reference to Psalm 69.9. And if Jesus clears the temple court came up in an, an anthology question, a clarified question on the Edexcel exam, you could make reference to this. You could draw out uh, that this is an Old Testament reference to Psalm 69 verse 9. The second row is the Bread of Life discourse, uh, which has a reference to Exodus 16.4. So again, if there was a clarified question on this I am saying, which comes under um, the titles and I am saying topic, you could also make this reference here. Equally, we've got the third row, belief and unbelief amongst the Jews, it has a reference to Isaiah 6.10. And the final row, the world hates the disciples, has a reference to Psalm 69.4. So you do need to learn these passages and the Old Testament references in case there was perhaps an explore question where you would need to off the top of your head know these Bible references. But equally do keep in mind if a clarified question comes up on some of these passages uh, that are on the specification, you could draw links to this topic as well as the topic we studied when we initially came across the text. There are uh, further references uh, to the Old Testament, we get quite a few in the crucifixion narrative. And what seems to be emphasised here is that we've got a theme of fulfilment, that Jesus is fulfilling Old Testament um, expectations, Old Testament uh, scripture. So we've got the part where soldiers divide up Jesus' clothes appears in Psalms 28:18. Jesus' legs are not broken is a reference to Psalms 34.20. Jesus' side is pierced can be seen as a reference to Zechariah 12 verse 10. And then finally, we've got so that scriptures would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty, Psalms 22.15. With the last one, there is a bit of a side note that the author probably intended to make a theological point that Jesus um, might not have said this one to fulfill scripture. So this one's a bit more open to interpretation. But evidently across the crucifixion narrative, there are multiple references to Old Testament scripture. So now that we've looked at the Old Testament scriptures and how John uses them in his gospel, we need to decide what conclusions we can draw. First of all, we can determine that these fulfillment passages where Jesus fulfills Old Testament scripture offer proof to a Jewish reader, to a Jewish audience, that Jesus was the Messiah. Secondly, the passages John uses from the Old Testament are not ones usually associated with messianic expectations. And what you can do here is you can make a link to topic 1.1, prophecies regarding the Messiah, to show that the passages that John uses are quite different to the ones we studied in that topic and we looked at it in relation to the birth narrative in Matthew. Initially, the links that John makes seem quite obscure. However, 
these only make sense if you believe in Jesus as the son of God and that's all got to be there in place first in order to understand the Old Testament reference. Finally, the author of John's gospel, the purpose is to stress Jesus's divinity and this is something that can be stretched back to the prologue in John that Jesus is the word, the logos. He wanted, i.e. the author of John's gospel, wanted the Christian community to understand um, what it meant for Jesus, not only to be Christ, but the son of God. What do those terms mean for John, uh, the author of John's gospel? And therefore what we see here and in other cases is John using all the tools at his disposal, including references to Old Testament scripture in order to meet this purpose. So what you would perhaps do here, the last point is sort of hinting at perhaps an AO2 question. Um, if it was an AO2 question looking at whether John's purpose was to fulfill scripture, you could say whilst he does uh, use Old Testament scripture and he uses it to try and show who Jesus is in terms of his divinity, um, it is one tool amongst many. And your counter arguments would probably be other tools that he uses in order to also make this broader point um, concerning Jesus and his divinity. So I would recommend going through these other PowerPoints on the purpose, looking at John's gospel more generally and trying to pick out other ways in which um, the author of John's gospel conveys to his audience that Jesus um, was the son of God, was the Messiah, and what that means for him in particular. This then marks the end of my three videos on the purpose in John's gospel, but also marks the end of my videos for now on topic 3.2 if you are studying at Excel A-level religious studies. If you haven't, make sure you watch the rest of the videos in this series, and most importantly, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already to this channel. But thank you for watching.